It's early March, and you know what that means. Severe weather is back on the menu, and it's my birthday in a couple of days. You probably didn't know that it being March meant that. <laughs> But anyways, severe weather is back on the menu. We've got a lot to talk about today, so let's dive right into it. First of all, today, Thursday, March 7th, 2024, we do have a slight risk of severe weather in parts of Oklahoma and Texas and a big marginal risk that goes from Kansas all the way down to close to Mexico. This is driven mostly by a hail threat. In fact, I think we're going to see some massive hail down there in Texas, especially later today. And some of that might make it into the Fort Worth area, some more populated portions of Texas. So we're going talk about that here in a minute but of course it does not end there tomorrow friday march 8th 2024 we've got a much bigger slight risk of severe weather as the storm system is going to be moving east this includes texas arkansas louisiana mississippi alabama and parts of the panhandle of florida and you think ryan what's driving this is it hail well yeah but there's also a tornado threat in fact there's a huge five percent tornado risk here that i believe very well could be upgraded to a ten percent as we go into tomorrow it just depends on what the data shows and now you must be thinking well that's got to be it, right? Well, no. The storm will continue to move east and bring a slight risk of severe weather once again to the southeastern part of the U.S. as we go into Saturday. So this is going to be a multi-day severe weather event. And let's see what that looks like on radar. Or I guess I should say a simulated view of what the radar could look like as we go into the future. Here we are around 3 p.m. today. We're going to see those big storms popping up down here in Texas. Once again, some hail the size of golf balls, maybe even tennis balls, maybe even larger is going to be possible in Central Texas as those storms really get going, especially around five or six o'clock. There's going to be additional storms that form along the cold front around eight and nine o'clock up here in Oklahoma and Kansas. These also have the very real possibility of producing some large hail, but the damaging wind threat with those are there as well. And then as we go into the overnight period tonight, this is going to turn into mostly a cluster of heavy rain and general thunderstorms, but there will be a couple of pockets where I think large hail is still possible, even as we go into the early morning hours on Friday. Now, Friday is where things get a little more interesting, okay? You can see very clearly that we have a very prominent cold air mass on the backside of this thing, okay? We've got cold air rushing down from Canada, bringing in that snow to portions of the panhandle of Texas up into Colorado, even in Iowa. And then obviously the counterclockwise spin is going to bring a lot of warm, moist air in on the eastern side. And where those two air masses meet, there's going to be enough activity in the mid-levels of the atmosphere to promote some shear, some spinning storms and we could see an elevated tornado risk uh, as we go into the day tomorrow. Now, one of the things that we've got to watch out for is the mess, okay? A lot of times in a setup like this, if we're going to see tornadoes, you need isolated supercells. This looks like a system that's going to produce a lot of different storms and if we get so many storms popping up, they might cancel each other out and just become a really heavy rain and damaging wind event and we don't have to worry about tornadoes. But if that doesn't happen, then there is actually a decently high ceiling here for the formation of tornadoes in this area, especially starting around 4 p.m. and on. You can see how some supercells try to form, but it's a brief window before this turns into mostly a linear or multicellular event where the main threat really will become flash flooding and rain once this gets into the central part of Alabama. But yeah, there's definitely enough shear and other ingredients in place to promote the idea of tornadoes early in the day and into the early afternoon on Friday, and then the severe weather threat shifts to flooding as we go into to the early morning hours on Saturday. And then that severe weather threat does carry into the East Coast, but it's going to be mostly a damaging wind threat, I think. And our simulated radar doesn't go out that far. Here's a look at uh, estimated rainfall totals from the HRRR. There's going to be some places here that see maybe more than five or six inches of rain in a very short period of time. So I think that if tornadoes aren't the headline maker of this storm system in the South, it's definitely going to be the flash flooding, not the hail, not the winds. The flash flooding is going to be what you're going to want to pay attention to the most, I think, as this goes forward. And of course, it doesn't even stop there. The storm system is going to carry off to the east coast. It's going to bring some heavy rain even to the northeast. Pennsylvania, the entire state will be experiencing some sort of downpour around 10 p.m. on Saturday, March 9th, all while I'm having my birthday party down here. And look at all this cold air coming in behind the storm system. That's going to allow for some snow in Michigan, a little bit of snow up in the northeast as well. But this doesn't look like a big snowstorm at all.
all. There might be a little bit of a lake effect and lake enhanced snow on the backside there, but the little bulb of cold air is going to move out of there fairly quickly in place of a ridge. So some really warm air is gonna try to move back up from the south. This ridge isn't that strong, so it is gonna make it quite warm the farther north you go, but actually down here in the south and along the east coast, we're gonna be near average, maybe even below average for the majority of the beginning of next week. There's another storm system coming in on Monday and Tuesday into the Pacific Northwest, bringing snow and rain. What happens to it in the plains? Well, it looks like another system that could get caught up with some Gulf of Mexico moisture and try to produce some more severe weather. So we're gonna be watching it very closely, but outside of that, it doesn't look that significant. Here's a look at those temperature anomalies once again. Right now, we're very warm in the east, very cool in the west. Those two air masses are going to combine, of course, and help fuel that storm that's about to bring severe weather over the three-day course. Once that severe weather is out of here, look at what's happening. We are below average or near average for a lot of this area. And then as that ridge tries to build up, it's going to start getting warm up here in the north central U.S. Very warm, actually. And I think that this warmth is going to kind of propagate to the east as we go towards the middle of March. And it's not just me that's saying this. The Climate Prediction Center has their three to four week temperature outlook from March 16th to March 29th. It looks like a lot of the northeast is going to be above average as that ridge moves east. The rest of us are going to be close to normal, a little bit below normal maybe in Colorado, New Mexico, places like that, and then maybe a tad bit above normal in the Pacific Northwest. But this is what we're looking at as far as temperatures go. But beyond that, I don't have anything else for you. I think we should focus on the short term, really get our heads straight and prepared for severe weather over the next three days in the south. And then if something else happens after that, we'll tackle it in the medium to short term again. And speaking of being weather ready and weather prepared, in the last extra video, I talked about how we had NOAA weather radios on our store. Well, we don't anymore because we sold out. Super grateful for you guys. And I'm also thankful that so many more people have these very useful tools, in my opinion, life-saving tools. So we're going to be working on getting a lot more for our website. Make sure you go to shopryanhall.com and keep an eye on that because we are going to have more on there, but you can get them at Target too. But while you're over there on shopryanhall.com, browse around. We've got all kinds of cool stuff. We've got coffee. We've got t-shirts. We've got the yala meters. We even have hail meters You can measure hail on these radial devices while supporting our channel. The support that you guys are giving us is allowing us to not really heavily depend on sponsors so much, which is great for us and for you. Go to shopryanhall.com and support us over there. We've got weather stations. We've got anything that you could want as either a fan of what we do here on the Ryan Hall Y'all channel or just a general fan of weather. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.